Hey, what up, folks? How are you guys doing? Uh, well, it's not us today. It's just me, Chris. Fortunately, Rob couldn't make it today. But that's okay, because you get me. And if you don't know Joe Rotella, folks, you should. This gentleman has a great, great podcast called I Got My Notes Here So I Don't Ruin It, The Crypto 101 Show. Hey, Joe, how are you doing, bud? Good. Thanks, Chris. I really appreciate it. I'm glad you like the show. That's what it's there for. Yeah, it's a little bit of fun, and I'm I'm learning some. I, I I won't be upfront. I am the biggest novice in crypto there probably is out there. You know, as my daughters say, I'm 112 years old, so you know, <laughs> older than dirt, make dirt look young. You know, all that good stuff. But anyway, I had to know. You know, with crypto becoming this big thing, for somebody like me, what well, what recommendations would you give me? Um, so with, with trying to get to understand it, the best way, um, cause you can go the route of like, um, there's sailor is a guy that he does, um, a lot of crypto stuff, really smart guy. Um, there's also, um, Lynn Aldrin, who's a really big financial person, um, who I think is very, very smart. She's a, she's a really, really smart person about not just crypto, but financial stuff in general. The biggest thing to take away from it, um, because like you, I'm not like, I didn't go to school for this. It, I, I've been learning it on my own and I am no guru. Like I do not claim to be, but um, I think people need to get the bigger picture of it. And like the underlying understanding of, uh, and I hate giving my opinion on stuff because it sometimes comes off. Um, I really think 98% of crypto is BS. Like I think a lot of it is just, like there's a lot of crap in the mix. Um, but 2% of it is legit. Like that could change the whole financial system single-handedly. That's so, the way I think too. So that's, that, that's good. Okay, we're on the same page there then. All right, cool. Um, so I want to bring up a crypto if you don't mind. Are you good? Sure. Um, it's called Safe Moon. I've heard of. You know, I'm on the fence. Part of me sometimes goes, yes, it's a good thing. Part of me goes, you know what? I'm, I don't think so. Marketing's phenomenal. They do a real good job of marketing to get yeah. the name out there. What are your thoughts on it? So Safe Moon, I haven't looked so much into. I did at the beginning when it first came out. And I, I don't like, I'm going to be completely honest. I only, only have Bitcoin. Like I don't, I'm, and it's not that I'm a Bitcoin purist. It's just a lot of the other coins and stuff like that, you know, because you have altcoins, which clump in shit coins, and then you have your stable coins, which so with SafeMoon, I've heard good things about it. And I've heard the same thing like bad things. I don't really have too much of an opinion when it comes to these things, because it's like, I never want to persuade people into thinking like, I, I dictate to them what they should invest in or whatever. Um, but when I first looked into it, I thought there was some promising stuff from what I remember, but I haven't looked into it in quite a bit just because it's one of those things where I'm like, it's a coin, you know, if people want to invest in it, that's fine. And for me to tell them like this, you know, cause even on my podcast, I try not to like, I use Bitcoin as an example, just strictly because it's, it's the easiest thing for people to grab the concept of with yeah. all this stuff. So I don't, you know, with altcoins, I'm kind of in the general purpose of like, I just don't even sometimes partake in some of that. Besides like Ethereum, it's like, eh, like they your can Ethereum, be- Your Ethereum, your Shibus, your Elon Shibu, yeah. or, you know, all that. Yes. Kind of, I get it. Yes. No, it makes total sense. <laughs> Me, I kind of dibble and dabble and, you know, go, hey, what's going to happen here? Let's flip a coin. Yeah. Uh, Africa, that sounds like a good crypto right yeah. now Let's check it out. You know, that's it. that is what majority of people i think are doing so don't feel bad about it so Ooh, all right <laughs> i don't want to be the majority though anyway well yeah you know how that is um so for yourself in the future where do you see crypto going so i personally think it's the underlying technology behind it, blockchain is amazing. And I think that's where a lot of people are missing out on not understanding. They just hear cryptocurrency and they think fraud and scam and all this stuff. And it's like, 
take, take the bigger picture. Like we need to view the bigger picture. The younger generations, A, they don't like the archaic way of exchanging dollar bills and stuff. They no. want digital. They're all, everybody's on their cell phones now. They use apps, they use all this stuff. Um, I don't think necessarily that it's gonna be uh, cryptocurrency, like to all these tokens and coins. Like I, I think some of these are fads. I think Bitcoin's a long lasting thing because it was the first and there's purpose behind it. There's utility, there's scarcity and there's belief in it. And there's a lot of countries, a lot of um, countries, uh, citizens that are bypassing the actual country's uh, currency and yeah. using Bitcoin and it's making it global and it's peer to peer, which is huge. It cuts a middleman out. So go ahead. I didn't mean to cut you off. No, 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 no. You're totally good. No, no, no. You're fine. I was just kind of, I was talking my way through it so I could remember the question or else I would forget Yeah, that type of thing. So please go ahead and continue. Well, well it's definitely like the, the underlying thing that people are missing is like smart contracts. Um, there's in the music industry itself, because I do a lot of music stuff, um, there's bands that are producing their own tokens out there for their fan base and it's direct content to their like there's no middleman they don't have to use a distribution platform they like there's so much benefits to this and granted like there's everything there's a grayscale it's not all perfect but between medical records being more safe and secure like blockchain makes that enabled Right. for that and that's where i think people are missing especially like i'm an old millennial i'm 40 so for me it's like i'm on that cusp of like sometimes the kids look at me too like my daughter's nine and a half and she doesn't really know much about this stuff but i can tell when i get to that age it's going to be like you're just an old dinosaur what do you know yeah and i think <laughs> yes that's exactly and but i think that's the younger generations are coming up. They want the baton passed to them. And whether we like it or not, they are going to take the baton from us. And this is one of those things where it's like they're understanding technology way more than we all are. Oh, yeah. And I, they're gravitating to this, but it's also just security. Like blockchain is really secure. Like if you look at Bitcoin's blockchain, there needs to be 51% consensus or 51% of the the uh, blockchain has to be hacked, which is pretty much impossible to do considering the millions of users using it. So I think where do I say going in the future is just the, the elimination of a middleman is yeah. really what's creating this whole thing. And you're seeing tension in politics from it because they don't understand it nope. and they refuse to understand it. And it's like, well, you can refuse it, but it's going that way, whether you like it or not. When I realized there was a big shift, it was probably, God, I'll say maybe eight, nine months ago. Mm -hmm. And I was in a casino. Go figure, right? <laughs> I was in a casino and I looked at the ATM and there was a little Bitcoin um, symbol down at the bottom. So me being me, I hit on it and I was like, wow, you can actually pull Bitcoin out at a casino. That's nuts. Yeah. And then I started to, I had a realization. I'm like, all right, it's beginning. It, yeah. it really is because if that is what's going on, what's the next step? Our, I mean, we've already seen steps before that, but what is the next step? Are we going to be able to go ahead and go to the car dealership and buy a car with Bitcoin? Are we going, you know, that type of thing, because it's starting to grow and grow and grow and kind of mushroom cloud out, you know, which is cool. I think, why not? You know, let's do something. Let's do something a little different, but anyway, let's, let's get back to you. Now you said you're, you like music. So let, let's talk a little bit about music. What do you like to play? And Oh, sure. Uh, no, I mostly, I started off in drums. I don't know if you could, I have the drum kits over here. Um, and then um, I, I was doing, I've been doing that for like 25, 26 years. And then uh, recently, probably within like the last like seven, eight years, I picked up guitar, some bass uh, and just synth keys, piano. I have a whole setup over here. And then uh, I've been doing music production for about 10 years and then just 
slowly realized like you could be a one man band if you really wanted to be. Oh, that's it's, awesome. Yeah. So it's just grew into that. And, and then, you know, adding in tech, speaking of technology, it's like the more tech stuff comes out, it's just fascinating to me. And a lot of people just fight it. And it's even in the music industry, yeah. they fight so hard going digital. It's like, why? I'm glad you bring that up because you had talked about the music industry and being able to get things out and the crypto. For you seeing all this, um, sorry, I'm trying to form the question. I have it in sure. my head and it's, give me a second here. All right. So with the music industry, with crypto, pulling out that middleman, do you think that's going to allow performers to maybe make a little more money, get a little bit more copyright, get more stuff on the back end instead of everything up front? Yeah, absolutely. I think, I think it's going that way. There's a lot of, um, I don't have them off the top of my head. I did a YouTube video a couple of years ago about this with blockchain technology evolving industry in this decade. And there's, um, I think it's called Amuse. Um, AMUSE, I think they do like distribution where it's it's direct peer to peer where these it's a platform still but it's blockchain based and these the royalties are eliminating the the record labels they're eliminating or the other side of the spectrum is this it's a smart contract basically which is works runs on blockchain and it and let's say you have a producer, you have the writers, you have all these people are lumped in there. Each one of them, this smart contract can directly pull for whatever that cost was for that track. Uh -huh. And it'll pull to each one of those individuals. Now there's probably people listening that are like, well, this is all bullet BS. Like, you know, we, we, what, what's the point, like the difference, but they're not understanding is that it gives, it gives people more freedom it, it's more anonymity where there's, it's more anonymous, which is, I think a lot of people like their privacy. Right. Um, and, and that's huge. And, and that's also in the music industry. Plus it just allows fans to be direct with the musicians and the bands themselves. Like it, it's, it just functions better. And it's less people trying to get their hands into things. And a lot more artists can get into the game that way. Whether that's good or bad, I don't know. But I still think that's a benefit of having freedom to do that with these types of platforms that are creating stuff off of blockchain that was evolved from cryptocurrency. Yeah. And um, Portugal the Man actually did. They were one of the first people to do something with cryptocurrency and their like fan base thing. And they direct sent out like stuff where it was directly distributed through them and peer to, like peer to peer. Um, it's just, it's, it's, it's good. The one place I would love to see, which probably I'm going to get a lot of pushback for this is I hate Ticketmaster. I hate Ticketmaster with a passion and that's yeah. Me too. I, Me too. And blockchain could completely, I wish some, and again, I don't have the funding for it, but I wish someone like an Elon Musk or somebody who had funding would actually look at this who wasn't just into it to make money, but would see a benefit of it, it would eliminate so much hassle for not only the artists, but the fan base. And yeah. that's where ultimately with music, I would love to see this take off where it just evolves into that, where venues could provide the tickets direct to the fans. Yep. Eliminating a middleman and you're not having the sharks come in who buy up all these tickets right. and, Anyway, I'm going off on a tangent. I didn't mean to, to do that, but I mean, come on, a fifty dollar ticket and 95 percent of it is a fee. A fee, right? I, come on, it's insane. But that's where blockchain allows that to be more evolved, and it's not perfect. Again, it's not this perfect solution, but it, it but it gets to the point of making it better for most people involved. So. I don't know. That's where I do see, though, with the music industry, where it's heading yeah. somewhat. So I like it. I like it. I think it's it, it, it's a brilliant idea. You know, you write a letter to Elon Musk. Hey, <laughs> you got a grant that I can get from you? <laughs> a couple hundred million. You know, just yeah, you know. Going. What do you think? It's a good yeah. idea. We'll put blah 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 Elon at the end of. Will that work? Yes. Us? We have to stroke his ego a bit, I think, but. Exactly. I, th I think it sounds good. Anyway, 
<laughs> oh man. So my last question is sorry, I got I, I like to write my questions down, so I'm kind of, you know, old school in regards. You're all good. Cool. You know, it's kind of a basic, basic question, and I like to end with it. And it's kind of a two-parter, okay? Okay. Okay. So now the first part of that question is how did you get into crypto exactly for you? I mean, I know you said you you get Bitcoin, but how did you get into it? So I, I this was 2016. Uh, I was going through a hard time in my life. I was going through a divorce and stuff like that. And at the time, I it was it was still kind of that weird realm of like, what is this thing? And just being in my own screwed up head, I started to just find different outlets through Reddit of like thinking, like looking through things. And one of them came up was cryptocurrency. So I just started to look it up and be like, what is this thing? Like, what am I not understanding about it? And as I dived in in 2016, I'm like, all right, fine, I'll take a bite. So I think Bitcoin was at $900 at the time. So I purchased some at that time. And um, I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know what the hell to do. I, and I wound up getting a Electrum wallet, which is basically just a wallet that sits on your desktop. Um, yep. And I transferred it into there and I let it sit there. And then I let it sit there for about a year and a half. And then I, I met a, like now he's one of my best friends. And he and I started talking. I'm like, oh yeah, I, I have some portion of a Bitcoin and like a wallet on my desk. So, and he kind of knew about more about it than I did. So then we just started talking. I'm like, no way, this is crazy. So then about, that was about 20, like later 2017. So it was probably about a year and a half. And then I just dove full in and just was like, what is all this stuff? And how do I understand it better? And what am I actually doing with it? And that's where it kind of spiraled into like, oh, okay, this is really cool. Like just, and, um, but it was also going into it. This is the, the main reason I started this podcast, because when I started off, it was like, oh, this is all bullshit. This is all bullshit. Yeah. With my podcast, I wanted to be where I don't give you my opinion. I want you to come to a generalization of critical thinking because the world is lacking that whoa, a lot right whoa, now. Whoa, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Critical thinkers? Yes. You're kidding me. No way. People actually can still do that now without being told what to, anyway, that's a different story. We'll that, that. But that's, but that's, that's the exact. And when I first went into it, I had a biased opinion. I knew I did. I knew that I thought it was bullshit, you know, all this stuff. And then after going through that and like looking at this podcast and talking to a couple of my friends that are in crypto, it was like, I don't want to have an opinion on this. Like I want people to understand that there's a whole spectrum of whether the Fed is good or not, or whether centralized is good or decentralized. It doesn't matter what I think. I think people need to come to a generalization. And if we have a better populace understanding this stuff, we have better voters who understand people in charge aren't as smart as we think they are. And maybe we can get better people who understand each realm of things so that's initially when it started off with me learning Bitcoin or crypto or whatever. It was like, I came from a, a, an opinionated part of my life and I'm still opinionated, but in this aspect of it, it, it made me grow. And that's how I wanted people to understand crypto to start off was have an understanding and open mind before you just jump into it's fraud, it's, it's malicious, it's, it's the black market, you know, which is complete and utter BS. It's right. the black market. Money is still cash. Money is still used more on the black market than crypto right now. So it's like, but people don't want to see data and statistics. They want their opinion validated. Exactly. Anyway, I'm going off again. I'm sorry. No, I started off that way and that's where it went off to. And, um, and then that's why I started the podcast though, was so that people could come in, not feel like they are stupid, but actually like understand, I, I'm not making any money off this either. Like this is strictly just for my own to teach people because I want them to understand there's a bigger world here than just, okay. I hate crypto or I like crypto. Like let's get a better understanding and come together on it, so. Absolutely. So what's interesting is with your answer to my one question, you actually answered both questions. I'm going to oh. just tell you, maybe you can add on to it what the second question was. In sports, I like to tell people, because I coached for 30 years, 
I know what's going to happen in that first step with that ball player. Okay. I always like to ask, what would be your first step for crypto? In my opinion, you actually kind of answered it, but if you want to elaborate more, please, by all means, go ahead. Oh, uh, well, I feel bad because I didn't mean to even go off on that long of a No, tangent. it was awesome. No, it was oh, okay. great. <laughs> well, I, love it. I think everybody who's trying to learn about it needs to go into it with an open mind and understand, like, the other thing is nobody's an expert. Nobody can predict where any of this is going. And, and, and the people that, that like never listen to somebody that says that they know, you know, it's the same thing with investments when people are like, this is a guarantee. You don't listen to them. Like, that's the point of like, so if they go into it with an open mind and they start that way and understand that it, it's, you don't have to like every aspect of it. I don't like every aspect of it. You like you and I talked about, we think, Oh, most of it is BS, you know, but there is good stuff in there that could change. So I think if people go into it with an open mind of just, I don't know anything, I need to learn about this stuff. And, um, and not only take my show, like go out and seek more information. That's the purpose of all this. And we have these tools to do it, but do it correctly with an open mind and and critically question everything like what is this what is you know so i think if people began to do beginning to do that would they would understand this a lot quicker than maybe i did because it took me time to figure it out so i feel bad i did not go mean to go off on tangents you know what you were great please understand that i loved it i loved listening to it i loved what came out i love the enthusiasm you know what with that, I want to say thank you, Joe. I greatly appreciate you coming on the show today. Um, folks, check out his show. It is called The Crypto 101 Show. It's a great little podcast. He's got about 20 episodes out. You got to check it out. From all of us here at What Up with Rob and Chris, have a great day and a better tomorrow. Thank you, folks. Joe, again, thank you, sir. Thank you, Chris. I really appreciate it, buddy. All right. What up?